Well, there's a lot there in our gospel reading for today, right? Wouldn't you agree? There's a lot going on there. But I want to focus on one specific word from our gospel reading that really jumps off the page. And that is the word shrewd. S-H-R-E-W-D. Shrewd. Let's unpack that word and let's find out what it might mean in our gospel reading for today. Let me ask you this. When you think of the word shrewd, is that a positive word for you or is that a negative word for you? Does it have a positive connotation or do you not feel very good about the word shrewd? Now, I got to tell you something. For most of my adult life, whenever I heard or read the word shrewd, I put a negative spin on that word. Why? Because when I personally think of shrewd, I'm thinking of shady I'm thinking of underhanded. I'm thinking of dishonest. Uh, you know, when I think of like a shrewd business person, I'm thinking maybe this is a, a dishonest business person. I don't know why, but the word shrewd for me does not have a positive connotation, but more like a negative connotation. But it's really not negative. Jesus talks about a shrewd manager doing shrewd business practices, but then when you look up the definition of the word shrewd, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's take a look. If you look at the monitor, one def de definition in the dictionary is shrewd means having sharp powers of judgment. Sharp powers of judgment. What I think that means is when you're shrewd, you can look at a variety of circumstances, a variety of options, but then you're able to find a creative solution among all the different options that are available to you. It is a shrewd way of living life when you can say, I'm choosing the practice which is best for me and best for those in my world today. That's being shrewd. You can insert the word creative if you want, if that sounds more pleasing creative, creative solutions to complicated problems. Now, back to the word shrewd. You know who you want to be shrewd in your life? You want your tax accountant to be shrewd. It's true. Whoever does your taxes, you want that person to be very shrewd about the latest tax laws and how to save money with the, the legally allowed tax shelters and tax breaks that are available to you. Now, as many of you know, I've said many times, I used to be in the accounting world. I used to work for a CPA firm before going into the ministry. And many of my accounting associates were very shrewd accountants. They called it window dressing. They called it presenting financial statements that are more pleasing for the client and at the same time are legally acceptable accounting standards. Now, did you know there's a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion? You don't go to jail for tax avoidance. Tax avoidance means you are shrewd about every deduction you're allowed to take with your taxes, everything you can do to save the bottom line. Now, tax evasion, on the other hand, you can go to jail for that. That means you're deliberately evading the tax liability. Do you remember about a month ago, one of Donald Trump's associates actually was carted off to jail because he was found guilty of tax evasion. That's illegal. He wasn't shrewd. He was dishonest. There's a difference. Now look what Jesus is saying about the shrewd manager. If you look at the Bible verse at the bottom of the monitor this morning, Jesus said, the master commended the manager because he acted shrewdly, creatively, that's what shrewd really means. Being creative according to the law and within the boundaries of the law. So my question for you is this. How can you be shrewd in a positive way? 
How can you be shrewd to benefit you and others around you? That's what I'm focusing on today. How can you be creative in helping others? And I'm going to offer a few creative suggestions on how to do this. And up on the monitor, there are four suggestions that I will cover briefly. Number one, here's how you can be shrewd with financial giving. Everybody has to buy food these days, right? You go to the grocery store and you buy food. Most of us have to buy gasoline. Well, did you ever think of using a credit card to buy essential items instead of a debit card? As long as you pay off your balance on your credit card within a month, you don't pay the exorbitant interest rates that they're going to charge you. But here's the key. If you get a credit card for food purchases and gasoline purchases, the credit card should have a cash back option meaning for every, for every so often your purchases are rewarded and they offer you cash back for your purchases. You take the cash that you get back and you donate it to a local charity or to your church. Wink, wink. Because when you take the cash you're getting back, it's like free money. So you donate it to a charity or your church. Wink, wink and you get a tax deduction for doing that. So it's a win-win situation. Use your credit card to your advantage and use the cash back option to benefit a charity. Here's another one, a win-win situation. This is number two on the monitor this morning. I commend Kim Dwyer and Mackenzie Dwyer and all those, Jay Decker, the ones who were organizing the food drive for Rise Up last month. We had a food drive outside of the local supermarket and here's where I think this was creative, shrewd ways of getting people to be generous. It, wonderful creative stuff. When the customers would approach the grocery store, they were offered this beautiful rise up tote bag to take into the store with them. They were invited to fill the tote bag with non-perishable food items that they could donate to our local food pantry here in Rockaway Borough. But they were also told that when they exit the store, they will be given a brand new, attractive Rise Up tote bag to take home with them. Now you see how creatively shrewd that was? It was wonderful because people did give generously and they were rewarded with a souvenir tote bag. The tote bag was taken home with them. They're always looking at the Rise Up logo at home and thinking, how can I benefit Rise Up as they help the poor of our community? Ingenious idea. It wasn't my idea. That's why I'm saying thank you, Kim Dwyer, Mackenzie, Jay, and all the others who came up with the idea. This is what I'm talking about. Creative ways to help other people. Thinking outside of the box. Here's another one. This is number three on the monitor. Always look for charities that offer matching gifts. I love matching gifts. They'll match dollar for dollar what you give. So that means if you give $100 to a certain charity, it turns into $200. Again, you're being creative. You're being shrewd in a positive way to double your gift for whatever charity you want to support. And lastly, number four, I like two-for-one sales at the store. Let's say you go into the store and they're saying, if you buy one tube of toothpaste, we will give you the second tube absolutely free. Well, you take the free tube and you donate it to the local food pantry that accepts toiletry items as well. What are you doing there? You're still paying for the tube of toothpaste, but you're also getting another tube you can generously share with a neighbor who can't afford one. Now, most of you know by now that food stamps do not cover toiletry items. Food stamps do not cover soap, do not cover toothpaste, do not cover shampoo and deodorant. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you could have a two-for-one deal and you share half of your goods with people who can't afford them. What's the bottom line? I'm just saying there are ways we can think outside of the box. There are ways we can be creative. We can be shrewd in saying, how can I get the biggest bang for my buck? 
How can I help people around me and it doesn't even hurt me? How can I make the most of my generous giving to people around me? And believe me, there are opportunities all over the place for this to happen. What did Jesus say? Jesus said in our gospel lesson, and the words are presented here on the monitor, whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. You can take whatever resources you have and watch them multiply for the benefit of the world around you. You might say, well, I'm not made of money. I'm not Rockefeller. No, but you can take your resources and like I said earlier in the sermon, find ways to multiply those resources. Give to those who are in need. Follow what Jesus said in Matthew 25 when Jesus said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Think about ways you can be ambassadors for Jesus Christ with the resources you have, even if they are little resources. Because you know what I often say? A rising tide lifts all boats. Everybody benefits when we're generous with each other, when we're shrewd in a positive, creative, and certainly legal way. I close with the story that I observed on the program 60 Minutes. Have you ever seen the Sunday evening program called 60 Minutes? Well, they did a segment about two years ago about something that happened in Paraguay, and I was very, very touched by this story. Turns out there was a music teacher, an elementary school music teacher in Paraguay, who didn't have enough money to buy musical instruments for the students, and the students were certainly too poor to buy musical instruments on their own. So the music teacher went to the local dump and started getting scrap metal and scrap items that were on the junk heap. The next thing you know, an oil barrel was turned into a cello. Pipes that were discarded at the dump were molded, cleaned up, and formed into a trumpet. And I was blown away when I saw these musical instruments which were made from junk and trash. But they didn't sound like junk and trash. They sounded wonderful. And these elementary school kids were not only given the gift of musical instruments, the gift of music, the free music lessons, and then they performed these beautiful pieces of music. You can, you can Google this. Look it up on YouTube when you go home today about the, the elementary school kids in Paraguay playing beautiful music from junk. What I'm saying is a music teacher took rubbish, things that people discarded, turned them into beautiful blessings, and those beautiful blessings have provided the gift of beautiful music to hundreds and hundreds of people, not to mention the children who are blessed with new musical abilities. It's time to be shrewd. Can we turn our trash into treasures? Can we turn our rubbish into something that's valuable? Can we do the best we can to take our resources with the love of God and the grace of God and make them truly into abundant blessings? I remind you of the most famous story in all of Scriptures, the only miracle that appears in all four Gospels. That is the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. One little boy had five loaves of bread and two fish. And that meager little blessing was turned into a meal for 5,000 people with leftovers beside. There's no telling what you and I can do with the blessing of God. Whatever we offer, whatever we bring to the Lord's feet and say, Lord, multiply what we have so we can help others in need. Pray about how you and I can be shrewd in the name of Jesus Christ to help others. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.